Hey everyone. So it's a quiet rainy day today. So I wanted to do a quick update on the Whiting True Blue chickens. So this is going to be a super quick video. It is the last video I'm going to do on the Whiting True Blues. And I will say the skittishness still reigns true. It takes a lot to scare me. I used to do x-rays on angry cockatoos. That is the truth. And I will say catching this chicken to make this video actually had my adrenaline pumping. I was scared for a second. She was coming at me. But I got her. And I'll make this quick because I'm not, I'm not trying to stress her out. So... They have been doing really, really well. I will say we just recently experienced a really cold couple of weeks. It was snowing and uh, usually if chickens are gonna get frostbite on their combs, they I think would have during that time it got really cold. And I will say thanks to their little pea combs, the Whiting True Blues have made out really, really well in the weather. And they are a very healthy bird. I did just weigh this chicken. And she weighed 3.4 pounds, which is teeny, 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 tiny. And that feels accurate based off of what she feels like in my arms. And... It's crazy because, because they have been laying every single day. I am going to quickly show you a comparison of their egg and the hen, and then I'm going to let her go because she like definitely, she just wants me to let her go. And I'm, like I said, I'm not trying to stress her out. All right. So here is she. Or here she is. <laughs> here she is. Okay. And then I'll see if she... I have an egg in my pocket. Okay. Freshly laid from today. So compared to her, that is a pretty big egg. It didn't break. Oh my gosh. All right, I'm going to let her go. From my experience, they are not the friendliest breed. Um, so that does, that takes points away from them in my book because that means they're more difficult to handle. Treating them for things is going to be more of a headache because it stresses them out. And it, because they're stressed out, now I'm stressed out and... I really prefer to work with animals who are well accustomed to humans and really don't mind handling that much. So that is going to be the major drawback from my experience with the birds that I have that came directly from the hatchery. They just don't want anything to do with me. Um, but... The fact that they lay every single day. Now, um, out of the four that I have, I get three eggs every day. But I have a feeling one of them isn't laying yet. Even though the other three have been laying for months, I have been reading that sometimes they can take a little bit longer to lay. So I don't think it's someone's laying inconsistently. I think one of them isn't laying at all. But the fact that the other three have been laying really, really good is great. So going back to their size, so a 3.4 pound bird, that is a tiny bird. Um, so that means they, their feed to egg ratio is really good. So for every pound of food that goes into them, I'm getting a lot of eggs. 
whereas a different bird, let's say a barred rock or a Wyandotte, they're going to be a heavier kind of dual purpose bird. So you're going to get less eggs per amount of food that goes into the chicken. It's been pretty much constant rain here recently. Here's one of my project roosters. He is a mix between a silky and a barred rock. So let's go in to the coop. Everyone's laying. There she is laying her egg. Let's see if she can, she'll let me get close. Yeah, so. Oh my gosh. I don't want to disturb her. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. All right, and there's her egg. All right, so we can do. So here's one of the Delaware chicken eggs. I'm actually going to put this one in the incubator. Here is her egg. So even though the Delaware is a much bigger bird, they're laying basically the same size eggs. Maybe the Delaware is a little bit bigger, but still really, really, really good. Even though the Delaware is probably more than twice her size, uh, they're about the same size. Actually, there's one of the wedding true blues right there. That one has a muff, which is, uh, some of them are muffed and some of them aren't. One, I'm just gonna leave, so she lays her egg. I think the one that isn't laying is... That's the one that's not laying. There's one of the other ones. They, the variety of feather patterns is really pretty. So the other thing about the Whiting True Blues is they are excellent foragers. They love it. They love it when I let them out for the day and they are just happy as can be. And they come right back to the coop when it's time to come in, no problem whatsoever. If you have watched my videos a couple from a couple months ago, you might know that we did deal with them jumping out a lot. Like every couple hours, one of them was jumping out of the pen. And we did have to clip their wings to prevent that from happening anymore. I do have two of the white and true blue eggs compared to one of the white Delaware eggs here. So you can kind of see the difference in color. They are genuinely really pretty. Yeah, so just to recap, the small comb is great for the cold weather. Their small size means that you get more eggs per the amount of food that you give them, which is fantastic. Um, they are skittish and kind of flighty, which takes some points in my book, but they are, as advertised, they are a really great production bird, laying really pretty blue eggs and they are, they're not false advertising. They really are truly blue. They're nice. So I am, I don't have a whiting true blue rooster, but I am gonna hatch out some mixes uh, just as like a side project for fun to see what kind of eggs they lay and what they look like. And I will keep you updated. I will do a, um, little vlog style end of this video so if you want to stick around for that fantastic but if you don't um that's fine too thanks for watching and i'll see y'all inside all right so here we are inside 
I wanted to go over my thought process for who I decide to bring in versus if I want to continue, like how I make the decision to discontinue a project. And um, as you may or may not know, in my last video, I kind of went over some of the disadvantages of the Delaware Enhanced Broiler. And um, one thing I can tell you that's really useful is getting, getting this catalog. I, I think better than just scrolling on a, on a website. For dual purpose meepers, I have the Delaware Enhanced Broilers, as you may or may not know. But I'm thinking about switching to the Big Red Broiler. Let me know how, if you have any experience with the Big Red Broiler. They're supposed to be like a similar bird to the Red Ranger, which is, as you know, as you probably know, really popular. Um, I'm just not thrilled with the Delaware Enhanced Broilers, honestly. I'm gonna grow them out and I'm gonna try a couple more things, but I might just get a couple of these with my next order. So the second thing is, as you may or may not know, we grew out some production turkeys this year. We processed the Tom who weighed out around 50 pounds and we ended up smoking the meat and making lunch meat and it worked out fantastic, which around me right now, the cheapest lunch meat, like turkey lunch meat that you can get is um, almost $8 a pound, which is crazy. So having really good quality, really delicious smoked, all natural turkey lunch meat was super valuable and we, we ended up going through it super quick. So I want to do that again. Now, as you know, the hen turkey is still alive. I, I couldn't bring myself to process her. She's just so friendly and she was laying eggs. If she continues to lay eggs, then we'll give her a pass because she's doing something. But for the next batch of turkeys, I think I want to try the small white turkeys and these artisan black. So if you have any experience with these turkeys, let me know what you think. I am kind of excited about them. You can pause that and read it if you want. But yeah. And then the last thing I'm going to do is set up my incubator. So this is the incubator that I use. It's a tiny one. It only holds seven eggs, but um, that is not a problem for me. are for lockdown you take the tray out or maybe you leave it in but you just put these in there and it prevents it from getting um, so dirty if you've hashed out eggs you know they can really make a dusty mess in there yeah so this is this is a really uh, you may or may not know that Brinzi is a really good brand I've had so much success with this, with this little incubator. I had like one from Tractor Supply for the longest time and I could never get eggs to hatch. 